you know, I thought that, give Auburn credit, thought they played really well. Wendell Green just wasn't going to let them get beat tonight. Uh, a lot of great one-on-one -on -one plays that he made. A lot of great one-on-one -on -one plays I thought Flanagan made. Just, you know, just took guys and scored it. Broom is a, is a load. We tried to throw the ball to the post, didn't have a lot of success. They threw it to the post and did have some success. Tried a bunch of different guys. I was really impressed with Matt tonight. I thought Matt overall just played one of his best games. I really don't know how many points he scored, but I just thought his, just the way he played, he rebounded. We had a goal tonight. He'd get eight free throws, eight rebounds. Thought he moved the ball. Really proud of Ty Fagan at the end. Uh, we're, we're struggling right now at the point guard. Uh, just of good guys there, but just consistency. You know, you look at Green's personality. You know, so you know how funny he is to be around on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Thursday, just that smile and contagious. And that's what we need at that spot. You know, I watched a guy last night, we all did for Georgia, and just that contagious personality. When you start combining it with talent, it's amazing, these people that follow. And so that's something we really, really, we're, we're desperately trying to develop with our younger guys and trying to get. Uh, but offensively, I thought we played good enough. 73 would have won us a couple other SEC games. And uh, just our, our defense let us down. But again, I, I thought those guys just made some terrific one-on-one -on -one plays tonight. Give Auburn credit. You mentioned Wendell Green just in that second half. Did you see some, where did you see some of the defensive breakdowns, uh, especially kind of he, on the he just, yeah. I mean, he just, he just, you saw it. I mean, he made 24-foot shots. He uh, got Deshaun on a rescreen, and then he just started playing one-on-one -on -one and elevating at 17, 18 feet. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just basketball. You guard him. I mean, I like to. Bruce a really good coach, but it wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of tricky plays. It was just one on one ISOs, and and he got in the open floor, and we just we, we couldn't. We tried everybody on him, and he got the best of all of us. With this stretch that you guys have been in, some games have been really really close. You've been right there. Yep. Do you worry about where this team is at mentally? And no, how do you, how do not you at all. Oh, we, we we need to we need to win a game. Sure, everybody needs to win. You know, it makes everything feel good. No doubt. We just need to win to get that feeling. And, uh, but yeah, our team has had good practices, you know. We got to keep developing, coming to work every day and developing these young guys, trying to get them better. I tried to give Malik Ewing more of a chance tonight, you know, and uh, uh, to get him on the floor. I think his talent level, we're trying to maybe in a couple of weeks it'll help. We got to maybe look at Josh Mabala. We're still searching, you know, and uh, so we're going to keep fighting it and working and, uh, it's been, been, a, been a tough stretch, I mean, it has, you know, with the teams. You're talking about Alabama and Tennessee and this team right here and uh, who won our league last year. It's a top 15, 16 team, and Mississippi State was ranked on the road. So, yeah, we looked at it early. That was a tough four games, you know. But, you know, we were in a position where we thought we could have won two or three games, and we didn't do it. And so we just got to keep working. We got to stay positive with our guys. We got to take off tomorrow, come back on Thursday, and get ready for a good Georgia team on on Saturday, just all you can do. The leagues are unforgiving, especially this league in any sport, no matter what sports you coach. And uh, nobody's gonna feel sorry for yourself. So you gotta you gotta go and and work, put in the time, and and we gotta keep encouraging and develop these these players in our locker room. You Talk mentioned about the uh, point guard play. Uh, just what are you seeing right now out of Deshaun and Amari? They seem to be kind of pressing. yeah. I mean, uh, Amari is, you know, which he, he's against hard pressure. You know, his escapability of going by. Guys, you know, uh, he's, he's, you know, I love Amari, but he's having a trouble guarding the spot, you know, and I think that's probably the biggest thing of really trying to, because every night they just come at you with elite guards, just every night. And so, um, so that's why TJ has been, I think TJ's a better, right now as a point guard, he's our best defender, gives the best chance, you know, and he can, uh, TJ's not a true point guard, but he's gotten better, you know. Uh, Deshaun right now, now, as you said, he's not in a great place, you know, and, uh, you know, it looks like he's lost some confidence, and uh, you know he's got to become a better practice player. He had a good practice yesterday, you know. Just his, I think of anything we talk about is body language. You hear it all the time. Wendell Green's got unbelievable body language. Just, you just, I love him as a as a opposing coach. I don't like playing against him just because of his demeanor. You know, you just said, like I said, the quarterback at Georgia, he's got this unbelievable persona with body language. So I can say, screw the games. Just picture him on a Tuesday at 3 o'clock when you're practicing or an early morning workout at 6.30. When, when he walks through the door and you say, God, I love, I love seeing that guy. He just makes you feel good. And so we've got to develop a persona 
and, and body language at that, at that spot, it is so critical, you know. And so we're, we work every day. We talk about it all the time. And so it's just something that we're going to keep working. They're all three good guys, but we, we've got to get better. Post position earlier, and uh, Josh Mavala with he and Javis McKinnis, of course, Mavala not playing on this one, and Javis playing four minutes. Is that more of a product of something that they're doing, or is that more of a product of what the Eagles are doing? Just production after evaluating, you know, watching, and uh, Malik's size. Jay has struggled guarding centers in our league that are getting really, really big. You know, he's really about six, six and a half, six, seven. So Malik has better size, you know, and I mean, you know, Malik had three rebounds and a couple points in 10 minutes. Uh, you know, and uh, Jay, one rebound in four minutes. He didn't get as, as much opportunity tonight. And so, you know, Josh Mabala, like I said, he got behind the eight ball when he missed some practices coming back from the break. And uh, we're still searching and searching because we threw that ball to Theo. We thought we had some looks. Malik had a couple looks too, you know. Theo had, I thought, some really looks, you know, and just we just couldn't get the ball on the rim. A tough four game stretch like that. How do you keep morale and confidence up, making sure that you get back to that winning feeling? Yep, you just got, I mean, nothing like winning. Nothing like winning. Uh, like I said, we, we take off tomorrow, and then Thursday morning we come in and we'll we look at some of the things that we've got to get better at. We show positive plays and just get right to Georgia on, on Thursday afternoon. I mean, last year Arkansas lost their first three league games and went the Elite Eight. You know, we talked about that. I mean, it can just. That, this was a brutal stretch, kind of. The SEC didn't, you know, we should have won some games. We didn't do us a lot of favors to open it up. And, uh, but that's just part of it. And uh, we've got to take advantage, especially at home, and we haven't. And because uh, this game right here, the game broke good. We played really well early. And then just that first seven or eight minutes, as you saw, we just we couldn't make plays and they out toughed us in that, that period of time. Uh, I guess the guards that you've been talking about, I mean, does it – you expect at this point in the season to still be searching like you are? No, not at all. Not at all. No, we thought we would be further along. We did. And, uh, you know, all we can do is just keep working, is just keep working. You know, I, I get it with the freshman, young. You know, I get it. And really, TJ was kind of an off guard, but he just because of his defending. And so, you know, we just got to keep encouraging, keep working, keep coaching them hard, keep demanding, you know. And uh, so – we, we just got to keep working. Same thing with Deshaun. You know, the injury he came back from is not an easy thing. It's not, you know. And so it's one of those things he's got to fight, fight through it. And uh, we just got to keep working at it. Why do you, obviously, Deshaun had his injury, but I guess in general at that group, why do you feel like you haven't quite gotten there? Well, we knew the freshmen. You know, the freshmen would have a chance. You know, we thought Amari really after Orlando. But, I mean, no offense to those teams, nice teams. Oklahoma's a good team, you know, and, and the others are fine. But, I mean, this level of playing Final Four teams and, you know, it, it steps up a notch. It's just athletic, you know, deal, you know. And so a lot of it is, is being able to defend. Both those fre the freshmen and Deshaun, they're both going to be good players. We, we love our freshmen. They just we, – we've got to get them to be more productive in these games. Anything else? Thanks, guys.